everybody, Scoutcrafty here again. Uh, today we have a nice wrench, a uh, combination wrench from 1909. Our buddy Bert from Connecticut sent it down to uh, to see what we can do and, and share it with the channel. So let's get to it. It's going to be a nice hey, one. Today's project, we have a, I'm really excited about this one. My buddy Bert up in Connecticut had uh, written to me and he says, John, I got to, I'm thinking of picking up this wrench. What do you think of it? And I, I said, yeah, I've seen them before, but they, you know, they go for a lot of money and you know, they're not, you don't see them around too much. So, uh, Bert went for it and he says, I wonder, could you, you know, send it down? Maybe you could do a, a thing on the channel for it. I said, absolutely. That'd be great. So, uh, Bert, we're just going to clean this up for Bert because, uh, this one is in such good shape that, um, you know, it's, you can take away some of the value if you, uh, if you mess with it too much, you know, like taking out the forging marks and things like that, although I do it on all the other tools, you know, um, we don't do it on collect really collectible tools like this. Let me tell you a little bit about this wrench. It was um, manufactured by Matthews. It's called the uh, Neverstall. You can see here. Never stall by Matthews out of uh, Dayton, Ohio. But it was made and manufactured by the Thomas Manufacturing Company. And um, the inventor was a guy by the name of Frank Stoll in 1909, September 14th. He got the patent for this. And uh, this is what they used to call this a windmill wrench, believe it or not, because they said this is the only wrench you'd need to go up in a windmill and fix it because it's supposed to have 15 tools in here that you can use. It's a, a definite combination wrench. But before we test it out and show you how it works, let's get to cleaning it up. Um, I got a couple ideas on here. I went online, researched a few things. It's got the original paint on here. We want to leave that on. But uh, around here and stuff, I've seen that where they take it off and it really accents the wrench. So let's get to that. Okay, the wrench only comes apart into four pieces. And you can see here it has the retaining pin for the uh, thumb wheel. It's got the sliding jaw that goes up and, and down. Everything's in excellent shape. Obviously, this wasn't used much. And uh, over here, we just got to clean it out, take out some old dried grease, and then we'll get working on it. So this should be a fun project. Here we are at a post wire brush evaluation. If you look closely, you could see if you look real close over here where it's never so you could see if there was like some remnants of uh, like a reddish paint in here. And um, over here, you see some of the, the pitting, you know, that you'll, you'll get. And that was from rust um, over here on this side. You can see over here, there's some uh, pitting over here. And um, there was some black enamel paint that they used. And you could see that here, uh, like a blackish enamel. So um, as we go through it, some places were painted, some weren't. Uh, it might have been red in, in the recesses. I, I, I don't know. They changed, they had so many variations of how they painted these things. But uh, we're going to clean it up, get it nice and clean, uh, then decide what we're going to do with the color. Now you know my favorite part. You remember what this wrench looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh, yeah, I went a little bit overboard on this one. But, um, you know, Bert told me that he had a stand already made for it. He was going to display it. You know, it's not going to be used. This is just what you want to use for display, huh? Let me show you a little bit about this wrench and, and how it works. Uh, first of all, everything is back to... Uh, really better than new because uh, everything is polished uh, took the pin out polished it oiled it put it back in a little bit in, uh, of uh, thread locking compound on there so the pin won't back out uh, polished out the areas uh, I've seen some pictures of prototypes and this is what they look like and uh, it's just a, a pretty wrench isn't it and let's demonstrate how this works uh, why uh, this really, oh, for a gimmick wrench, it really isn't a gimmick wrench because it, um, it's a forged, drop forge wrench. I mean, this is not, this is a, <laughs> no joke. This isn't a cast, uh, a wrench that just looks goofy and whatever. Let's show you how Okay, it first off, we have the obvious uh, monkey wrench. And you see the monkey wrench works really well. Again, this is drop forged. This isn't cast. 
and you have a lot of leverage here to use it. So it does work very well. It's very smooth, you know, now that we polished everything. So that works good. We also have two sets of pliers. We have one set here, one set here, a larger one here. So you can use a smaller set here to grip something, especially the round stock works very well. And then we have the larger one here for larger stock. And you could see the kind of... Uh, capacity that you have with that that's a nice feature then what we have is which very interesting here we have that little nail puller on the bottom here or for tax or whatever you could get under and lift it up that way that's an interesting feature we have the screwdriver here that can be also used as a pry bar and you know you can pry up things like that and what's another nice thing is the nail pulling device you see this little area here well when you have the pliers like this you grab the pliers here over the nail and you could see and then you just wedge it up using that and you have a uh, an efficient nail puller that could pull out nails from the bottom using this uh, shelf here so that's uh, a nice little feature very interesting and it works very well we also have uh, a very nice working you know these side cutter wire cutters or nail cutters these always work great and uh, very sharp on both sides so they work good then you have interesting here, you have two square holes here that you can use for uh, pipe taps. They have a large and a small. You could put your pipe tap in there and you could uh, tap into something. So uh, whether or not these are gimmicks or whatnot, uh, you could see the usefulness of the tool. And especially when it is drop forged, you know, uh, that's the thing. When it's drop forged, that makes all the difference in the world. So in closing, we have our Matthews Never Stall wrench, our monkey wrench, that uh, combination tool, and uh, invented by Frank Stoll in uh, 1909. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a, uh, it is a nice little wrench, and uh, it definitely is uh, a combination wrench that you probably would want to take into a windmill if you ever were working on one. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this restoration. And uh, Bert, you should have it in a couple days. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>